Kathleen Donnelly, welcome <laughs> back to the Rocky Mountain Writer Podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited to be here today. Yeah, congratulations. Just a, but just about a month out from the launch of book number two. It is. Book number two comes out September 26th, which is coming up really fast. So yeah, just about a month. And if anyone is available, September 30th is the launch party at the Loveland Barnes and Noble. So the more the merrier. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Denver area folks take note. Loveland, uh, what about an hour north of Denver, I think, yeah. roughly, depending on traffic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah depending Fantastic. on traffic. Yeah. Yep. Great. Excellent. Well, let's uh, start by just uh, talking a little bit about the, the series, get people kind of oriented as to what the series is all about. And um, then let's get into what number two is uh, covering in particular. Great. So yeah, the National Forest Canine series, it centers around uh, my main character, Maya Thompson, who's a Forest Service law enforcement officer and canine handler. And her canine is Juniper. Juniper is a Malinois who does a great job with her work, helps solve mysteries, and creates a little bit of uh, fun on the side because I enjoy showing what it's like to live with a working dog. So the National Forest Canine Series, the first one was Chasing Justice, where Maya solved the murder of her best friend. And now in book two, she's going to solve the murder of her mother and grandmother. And the setting for these is, are they are both stories set roughly in the same location? They are. I created a fictional national forest I call the Pinot Grande National Forest. I envision it kind of being in the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest area. Those were the forests I grew up exploring, so to speak. My dad worked for the Forest Service, so we would go up there and um, I, I just love that area. I mean, Colorado, we have so many great national forests and to enjoy, but those those are two of my favorites. So I loosely based it on that area, but I wanted it to be fictional because I didn't want to worry about where the Poudre River was going or, you know, if I wanted to put a lake in a scene, I, I didn't want to worry about a lake actually existing. So it's it's been fun to base it off of that. Yeah. Before we get too far, let's just establish your credentials in terms of writing about a canine um, detective a partner for Maya, you bring tons of experience to your fictional work here. I do. It's been so much fun to have a fictional canine character because in real life, I live with two of them, <laughs> two mm -hmm. real, real canines. I work for a private company called Sherlock Hounds Detection Canines and we work drug dogs in schools to help deter the presence of drugs, alcohol, and gunpowder. And it, it's a lot of fun. It's a challenge learning to work a dog. Each one is different. And so I, I feel like Juniper has a little bit of each of my dogs in her to some extent. How many years have you been doing that? I've been working with Sherlock Hound since 2005. So I, mm -hmm. I've certified many, many hours in narcotic certification. And the fun part of this book too, though, Mark, was that I haven't done tracking and apprehension and some of the things that a dog like Juniper will do. So I went out and researched some of that. And of course, I'm really lucky because I have our trainers and a lot of great resources to base that research off of. And so it was a lot of fun to learn more about tracking and, and what goes into it. And it's just been great. So I have the narcotics background working the dogs, but it's really been fun just to expand my knowledge that way too. Yeah, it must have been interesting to see that sort of the same skill, but applied in a whole different way. Oh, definitely. And it's been fun just to learn little things. Um, you know, like when we're trying to get a dog to find drugs, wind and environment is very important, whether no matter what you're doing with the dog, but we might work that odor differently than if you're tracking someone. So it's it's just was really fascinating to to learn more. Yeah. Do you, when you write about your dogs in your books, do you find yourself ever kind of pushing the plausibility issue? Or you really try to stay very, very close to what is, um, you know, real life plausible? You know, it's funny. In the books, I feel like with the canine work, I actually keep it pretty realistic. I 
maybe push it here or there. The nice thing about fiction is I can tweak something. If I want to make it harder for Maya and Juniper to find something, like I said, the environment, I can make it really windy or you know, very cold or something along those lines. Or if I want to make it easier, then all of a sudden I can make the day a little bit nicer. And, and so that's kind of fun fictionally. I think where I push some of the plausibility is probably in the law enforcement scenarios with Maya, but not so much in the working dog stuff. I, I do try to keep that as accurate as possible. Yeah, gotcha. Now Maya is uh, a canine. She works exclusively with canines or does she also, um, you know, work as a detective without the dog? So the law enforcement officers for the Forest Service have a really fascinating job. They they can be canine handlers, and that's what I made Maya. And so she would also be considered one of their patrol officers. And so the Forest Service also has criminal investigators. And actually in book three, Killer Secrets, that's coming out in March, I bring in more of a criminal investigator character and, and have Maya get involved and I've been really lucky in that I was able to connect with a canine handler for the Forest Service. And since he and I first started talking, he has since moved up into the criminal investigator rank. So it's really been fun learning from him because the Forest Service is a little different from, say, a sheriff's department um, or a regular police department. They they might deal with a sheriff's department. They might deal with the FBI. They might deal with the ATF because federal land. Definitely, I mean, you get the FBI, but a lot of the sheriff's office have jurisdiction on federal, on Forest Service land, on federal land that way. Park Service is a little bit different, so it gets really, you have to kind of wow. know your jurisdiction there. But, um, so I have Maya, she will go out on investigations, maybe help interview someone, um, but mostly she's using the canine to help solve you know, you find someone, find narcotics, whatever, whatever the case may be. So you have a lot of bureaucracies to kind of keep track of, and there are various layers of uh, kind of the judicial system and the government system to kind of sort out. You do. It's a lot to keep track of. I've had fun learning about it. And it's nice fictionally because I can kind of bring in any agency, um, uh, as they call themselves, the alphabet soup agencies, the FBI yeah. or ATF, if they want, I can have a sheriff's office get involved. It's it's really fascinating. So it's it's interesting uh, in real life to see how the Forest Service works with other agencies, and they have to work with a lot of them. So those officers might work in three or four different counties, you know, three or four different sheriffs and cover a lot of land. And, and so it's just really fascinating real life work. And it's been fun to bring it to the page. Yeah, excellent. Well, tell us a little bit about Maya. Um, is she is pretty straightforward? Is she a rebel? Is she a, is she feisty? Is she um, a rule breaker? You know, Maya is feisty, but she also believes she's very honest. She's a very honest person and always wants to do the right thing. She deals with PTSD. She's a Marine veteran who was in Afghanistan, lost her dog in Afghanistan due to handler error, has always blamed herself for that. And that's the root of a lot of her PTSD. So in Chasing Justice, in book one, she had sworn she would never work another dog again. And then she's forced to take on this canine and and face her fear. So in book two, uh, Maya and Juniper are really getting to know each other. She's getting back into the swing of being a handler and remembering what it's like to live with a, a young Malinois who can be pretty destructive at times in a fun loving way. <laughs> Great. And uh, some love interest, I assume, always floating around. There is. So her love interest is uh, Chief Deputy Josh Colton. And he is uh, he has his own mysterious past, which is going to come out a little further in uh, book three, Killer Secrets. And he and Maya have our friends in the first book, but it continues on and turns into more by book two. Gotcha. So uh, we know each other. We, I've known, known you for many years mm -hmm. now, uh, which has been great. Uh, yeah, I know for a fact that Chasing Justice took a while to you'd you'd written it and found a publisher, but that that particular draft, that book had been around for a while. You'd been working on it for a while. And then the second book, you know, came out 
right away. And now you're already mentioning the third is, is I assume done if it's coming out in March. Uh, what's that? Can you talk a little bit about what it's been like to write, you know, and spend so much time working on a first book and then being under contract and having to turn them a, a little bit more quickly? Sure. Yeah, it's been it's been a learning curve for me. And you're right. Book three, I literally just sent my last edits in yesterday and my editor wow. gave me the thumbs up and said, it's good to go. It's it's in the pipeline. So it is officially done, which is hard to believe. Uh, if you had asked me three years ago when I was looking for an agent and said, could you have three books done by 2023? I'd be like, oh, no way. But the first book, Chasing Justice, took me about six years to write, a lot of rewriting and learning and starting over and uh, setting it aside and kind of could write when I felt like it. And it was it was fun. And then I, I got my agent and we signed and then we sent proposals for books two and three. And they said, yeah, this is great. And they gave me some deadlines and I thought, oh, yeah, no problem. And then I remember one day I sat down and I thought, oh my God, six years to write the first book. And now I have eight months <laughs> to get this second book out. And I, I can't just write anymore when I feel like it. I have to sit down and, and make myself work. But I found I love it. Actually, I found I almost work better under a deadline. I focus better and just you just sit down and get it done. So I've enjoyed that part, but it was also a learning curve for sure to, to just make myself every day, get 500 to a thousand words done. Yeah. I was about to ask you what your, what your grind looked like. What, what, what did, what does your writing process, what does your discipline look like? What time of day and how long do you work for that kind of thing? I'm a morning person. I get up really early, uh, get some coffee in the system. So really early, uh, it's about 4.30 in the morning. I and Join, join I, the club. Join yeah. the club. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you, it's a great time to write. It's, it's quiet great, and everything. It's uh, so good. It's it just, you, you, I, I just, I'm eager for it. I'm excited about it, you know? Yeah. 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 I found I don't write as well at night. I mean, I can do it. Again, if you're on a deadline and you have to get it done, I can do it. I just... It feels more difficult. So I try to write in the morning. Ideally, I love to get like a thousand words a day. And that's that's the ideal. It doesn't always happen just with my work schedule and whatnot. But if I can get a thousand words in, sometimes under deadline, I found out I could actually sit down and get five or six thousand words a day written. But that was like the whole day being dedicated to writing and yeah. the dogs were not happy with me. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how long does that couple hours, maybe, maybe two or three? Uh, for the five or 6,000 word days or? No, um, no, for the, for the regular morning routine. For the regular morning, I usually can get an hour in before the dogs wake up. And once they're awake, we're, we're off and doing stuff. So. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. How did that feel pulling the story together in that compressed time? Did you? Did you find yourself developing any kind of shortcuts in terms of, um, you know, when when you weren't writing your head, working on problems with the plot or characters or thinking about it all day long, so you could, when you were writing, you were being efficient. You weren't just sitting thinking. You were writing. Yeah, I found for me, I think the biggest thing because it was nerve wracking to have a whole book due in that short amount of time and. Um, I found for me an outline was the best thing. And I, I do a pretty in-depth outline. I, it's, I think it ended up being about 10 or 15,000 words as far as the outline. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's almost, it's almost a first draft in a, in its own way, but it gives me the chance to work things out, move things around. Something's not working, yank it out, not lose a hundred pages, something like that. So I found once I have the outline worked out and I feel like the major plot points are solid and I'm happy with where the inciting incident is and the character development, then I can work off of that. And it's nice because if I have a couple of days where I'm working the dogs and for some reason I don't get to write, I can go back and look at my outline and be like, oh yeah, this is where I was, get right back into it. So I admire pantsers. I 
I mean, they're amazing at how they can just sit down and just do that. But I found I really need the outline that that really helped me out. Yeah. Well, you and I both might write at the same time of the morning, but I'm a complete pantser. I have no idea how to write a 10,000 word outline. So <laughs> yeah, everybody's different, right? Yeah. That's they great. are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, talk a little bit about Chasing Justice. It it uh, recently uh, was up for the reader's favorite award at uh, Killer Nashville. I believe that's the correct um, award it was up for, a reader's choice, something like that. Yeah, reader's choice, and it made top 10 in the suspense category as well. So That's it was great. up for two Silver Falchians. Um, it didn't win, but you know what? There were some amazing authors it was listed with, and I was just so proud as a debut author to be even on that list. So that was really exciting. Yeah. Did you go back to Nashville for that? I couldn't this year. I really wanted to. Killer Nashville really holds a special place in my heart because in 2015, I won the Lisa Jackson Scholarship. And uh, people should know that that's still available along with many others. So if it's a conference they want to go to and you can't afford it, it they will pay your way if you uh, win one of those scholarships. So to win that and then um, come back, what, eight years later and and be a Silver Felsian finalist was just a dream come true. Because like I said, that that conference just really holds a special place in my heart. So That's great. What other sort of things with Chasing Justice, um, you know, in terms of getting reaction and um, sort of noticed, are there any stories along the way of marketing Chasing Justice that um, you would care to share? Sure. I mean, it's just been a lot of fun to connect with readers. I'm looking forward to coming to like the Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers Conference, and I'm going to be on the first book panel there. So it'll be great to meet other writers and other debuts. I think one of the funnest things I've done is I've become involved with the Larimer County Retired Canine Foundation, and they mm -hmm. raise money to pay for the sheriff's office retired canine so that the handlers can keep them and and have their expenses paid for when the dogs are done working because these dogs are very expensive. They usually have a lot of medical issues and whatnot. And I don't know if that's so much marketing. It just was something I, I did the Sheriff Citizens Academy. Larimer County is where I live. And it was just a lot of fun to get back involved with that department. We have a great sheriff's office and um, meet some of the handlers again, swap stories, talk to them about their dogs. So that's been a lot of fun. That, that was a door that opened through Chasing Justice. That's great. Wow. How cool. Yeah. That yeah. must make, make it feel like it all kind of comes full circle back around to your obvious passion with these well-trained animals. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, these dogs are amazing and what they go out there and do to to keep us safe is is really amazing. I mean, if if you if a viewer hasn't seen a dog work, they should look in for opportunities to to watch that because they are a lot of fun. Yeah, or read your books, of course. Oh, read the books first. Yeah, that'd be a good warm up. Yeah. <laughs> now you're you're planning. We're, we're recording this on Thursday, August twenty fourth. You're going to be at BoucherCon next week, right? I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. 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 Yep. And have you been to BoucherCon before? I was there last year. That was my okay. first one. Yep. yep. And I'm looking forward to it again. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And this year is San Diego. So it'll be fun. And there's a canine author panel. And I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah. Are you on the panel? I am. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Great, that is great. my panel. I, yeah. 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 I just want to make sure you weren't. Yeah. Are you, yeah. are you on the panel or moderating it? I'm on the panel and it's moderated by a great author, Kristen Nardi. Uh, Margaret Mitsushima is going to be on it. Jody Burnett from Colorado will be on it. So we have some good. I know Margaret doesn't live here anymore, but I still consider her our Colorado group. <laughs> definitely, definitely. She's still actively involved in Rocky Mountain yes. Mystery Writers of America. And uh, yeah. absolutely, she moved up to the great Northwest. Um, so that'll be that'll be fun. Are you going to do anything kind of differently as you approach BoucherCon this year based on what you learned and what you saw last year? You know, I'm I'm going to put myself out there a little bit more. I, I offered to volunteer, so I need to sign up for that. Um, 
I also am going to do an author spotlight on Saturday. Ah. I, and I think mine is from one to one thirty. So it's basically 30 minutes of just talking about your books or a subject. And of course, I'm going to talk about canines, but there's other subjects. If someone comes and has questions, love to talk about it. But I haven't done anything for quite that long, like on my own, like in a non-interview setting. So that'll be a lot yeah. of fun. It'll be, um, it'll just be great to connect with readers there. For, for those who don't know, tell folks how the author spotlight works. Well, I'm new to this. <laughs> how you sign up, how you sign up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So the authors can sign up for these slots and then I believe there's going to be an email that goes out with all the authors because there's right. going to be some great things. I'm going to do a book giveaway. I'm going to bring a book to give away a signed copy uh, and just try to make it a lot of fun. But uh, each author has about 30 minutes to talk about. They could do a signing. They can talk about their books. They, you know, it sounds like it's really up to each one. So it should be a lot of fun. So if someone's going, I definitely say, look at the schedule and see who's doing what. I know I'm going to see. So. Yeah, right. Watch some other folks do the spotlight. Yeah. 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 That's great. For those who don't know, I mean, PoucherCon is just a zoo. It's crazy. It it's just insane. It is. There are, sometimes I'll, I'll email friends and say, oh, I'll see you at PoucherCon. And I know they're there, but I won't run into them, you know, in three days. Yeah. Just, I was shocked nuts. last year at the size, like the number of people there. Yeah. I had no idea it was that big of a conference. Yeah. Did you hit the uh, bar con? Uh, the bar scene? The, the bar scene, yes. <laughs> yes, I did a little bit, yeah. And I went out to dinner with friends. And yeah, but you're right. I In fact, I think we ran into each other briefly. Yeah. And okay. Didn't see each but other again. So <laughs> The fact that I don't recall that shows you, well, I, I wouldn't recall it if I we had an hour-long conversation because that's how my memory is <laughs> these days, but... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just an absolute zoo. You just feel like you're on the whole time. So yeah. you do need to take breaks in the hotel room and go for yes. long walks. Yep, yep. Yes, yeah, yeah very, yeah. very good. Definitely. Are, are I mean, I assume based on the fact that there's a panel at BoucherCon, et cetera, focused on canine detectives, there's probably a fairly broad subgenre of mysteries that involve canine detectives out there do you do you have a rough idea are there dozens of writers who write a9 detectives are there more than that you know there are i think i would call it its own sub genre now yeah, honestly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean it's it's interesting i'll have people say to me oh have you read so and so and I'll, oh i haven't and they oh they write a canine mystery too so i think there's at least 15 maybe more writers doing that kind yeah. of work that I know of. I'm sure there's even more than that, but just that yeah. I know of off the top of my head. So, yeah. but it's fascinating and canines can do so many different jobs. So you could take one dog and do the traditional police work like mine does, or you could take another one and do search and rescue or cadaver dog work or anything like that. And so there's a lot of areas you can explore in mystery writing with canines. Yeah. Very cool. Do you, do you try to keep up with what other folks are writing in that same genre, subgenre, or do you kind of like say, I'll just make sure I don't read those. So I'm really writing something that is my own thing. You know what I mean? So uh, you're not in, yeah. inadvertently kind of picking up on other, other people's approach. I think it's a little bit of both. I have some favorite authors. I love to read Margaret being one of them and she and I exchange yeah. beta reads. So I definitely always read her books, Jody Burnett. I've read her books. Uh, other than that, and then I've read a few like Alex Kava and Robert Crace write some canine books. And I've read a few of those, but I did finally decide that I just wanted to do, like you said, to to not read too many and just make sure I'm I'm doing my own thing and go from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, congratulations on all this. And um Wow, you've got a busy seven, eight, well, probably 12 months ahead of you between marketing, hunting the truth and marketing for killer secrets. Do you kind of wish there was a little more time between book two and book three? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I'm excited yeah. for readers that they come out so close together. I think that'll be fun. 
I think marketing wise, we always can use more time. I, yeah, <laughs> at least I yeah. always say that, but I figure there's a few things I wanted to do for hunting the truth marketing wise. That I didn't get done just because you need more lead time. So I thought, well, I'll just start in now for killer secrets and kind of layer them together and see what I see what I can come up yeah. with. So I think there's pos- pros and cons to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, we always like to give our guests a chance to shine a spotlight on a book or a writer just to kind of pay it forward a little bit. So now's your chance. Great. Well, there's so many great writers out there. Uh, And we mentioned the canine authors already. So I'm going to go down a little different road. And there's a great new book out came out last week, I believe, called Saving Miles by Carl Van Der Rauw. And I got to read an ARC an advanced reader copy and it's really good carl did a fantastic job i couldn't put it down he kept me up at night i had to send him an email and complain that i was tired because the book was so good it kept me up at night so i would highly recommend it you can get it i believe at any major retailer i think it's available everywhere and i happen to have had lunch with carl in uh, albuquerque a left coast crime okay like, like a year and a half ago or so and uh what a great guy and yes. um, he's a terrific guy. And he's from Southern California. So I'm sure we'll run into him at BoucherCon uh, next yes. week, a week from today. We'll be out. Yeah. I'll be out there. Anyway, oh my so. gosh, we will. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. a week from today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's to Carl. And uh, I also want to track down a copy of that. It sounds fabulous. So yeah, yeah. really good book. He did great. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kathleen. Good luck. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Mark. 